Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And today I wanted to look at if we can use this free tool to be able to transform, skew, and edit this entire world to make it look even more post apocalyptic. You could use this on brand new cars to make them look squashed and skewed, and then edit the texture. And you can make this do things without actually having to edit the model in a 3D program. And I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you how to get it. And I'm going to show you how you can use it in your own project. It's free and it's actually superbly written and done. You can get this asset called Deform on the Unity Asset Store. And it has got a fair number of five star reviews. And you can add this to your assets and open it in Unity. It does have its own GitHub page from this great developer. And it's got details about installation, how to get started and everything you need. But seeing as though it's on the Unity Asset Store, that makes life so much easier. Now, when you open in Unity, you will get it inside the package manager. And when you search for deform and choose to install, just install the additional packages because it does need mathematics and the burst compiler to do it. Once it's installed and added it in, you can click on any 3D object you want in the world. So let's see this car. This car is already a little bit destroyed, but maybe I want it to lean in a particular direction. Now we can add a component called a deformer, but what we can do is we can make this even easier for ourselves. We can go to tools, we can go to deform, and we can go to the creator window. This is an entire window of all the deformers, all the deformer components, and I'm just gonna dock this at the side here. So you can see everything here. It's got some utilities, it's got masks, it's got noise, and it's got the different modifiers which can skew, bend, twist, and do things like that. Now, when you select any object for the transform, you need to put a deformable component on it. You can see that the deformable component does get attached, and you can see that there's a list of deformers that you can create. So with this, you could click just the plus to be able to add more deformers, or you can just select ones that you might want. So if I keep that object selected and I select bend, you can see it added to the deformer list. And you can see now bend is a child of this object and you've got parameters on the right hand side. So what we could do is we can change the angle. So you can see I can almost tip this car to one way as if it's been crashed or smashed and you can see that it does stretch out this side so you need to be wary of how your textures will look but you can see that I can enable and disable that modifier and you can see the adjustments that it makes. One great and awesome thing about this is it does this around a pivot point and you can see the pivot point here because we've got the bend selected and if you affect the pivot you can see from behind where it affects the overall look and we can maybe squish this car even more if we push it to this corner you can see, look, the car is almost looks like it's being crushed into the ground. And you can add additional modifiers if you want by selecting on the original object. And I haven't actually tried all these. We could try something like skew. And if we use skew and adjust the factor, you can warp the look of it a bit crazy. But you can just see that you can build up different components. And while you're looking at this, do be sure to check out my Patreon to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects. And there's a massive list down in the description. And do be sure to check out all the links down below because there's a brand new Unity sale and Loretta Studio massive Unity bundle, which you can check out too. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to this diner sign here and I want it to not be so prim and proper. I want it to almost look like it's fallen down. So what I'm going to do is select the sign again, add a deformable component, and I'm going to add, again, I'll add a bend. And I'll select the bend and you can see that we can bend wherever we are against maybe this bus here. We can also select the rotate tool to rotate the object around. It just about hits that object. And again, we can select the move tool and you can adjust where this is pivoted. And of course, this is affected by how much resolution is in the mesh. So the more polygons that you have it, the more accurate this will be. And because this model only has a limited amount because they've tried to optimize it to be low poly, you can see that only bends where the polygons are. You can always check that if you go to the drop down and you go to maybe shaded wireframe or wireframe and you can see where the mesh makes up where the joints would be. You can see here now when we've modified this mesh, you can see that the mesh collider or well, the colliders are still in the original position from the original object. What you need to do is go to the deformable component, go on collider and set that to auto. And it will be looking for, in this case, a mesh collider. This is probably the main body of what's fine for our object. And if I add the mesh collider in there, you can see it add the collider over there. You might want to adjust this and give everything custom collisions so you can make sure that you don't get additional banding in other places. I would never recommend using mesh colliders for everything. 
I would recommend using custom collisions or just creating your collisions outside of this object so don't have it as a component you won't need to worry. I wanted us to try some of these to check them out so if we had another deformable component and you may need to press the fix now if you start getting errors in the console when you actually add a deformable to your object and you can just click fix and it will remove that. Once you've got it selected you can start adding your deformer so let's add a twist and we'll give that a go. So if I move the pivot point and we add the twist you can see that the amount that it twists certain parts of your model. We'll try the ripple modifier. You can adjust the frequency and the amplitude. You'll have to affect where this would happen. There's one I quite like to use if we look at this bus and we add the uh, deformable and we have one of the working projects and we add a wave. You can then see if we select wave you can start adjusting this and you can make it wave around there so we can make it look a bit scrunched. You can adjust the offset with where that'll be and then you can just create that look of things that have been warped and changed over time. Maybe this has been crashed. You could potentially crash another vehicle into it. And here you can see I've waved both of these objects so it could look like they crashed into each other at one point in time and it buckled both of the vehicles together. One of them that I actually really like is like classic 3D programs. There's a lattice effect. So if you select lattice and you go to it, you get some bounding objects around your 3D objects. So you can select the control points and you can actually set how many control points that you might want. So you can see I can add more resolution to this. And now if I select one of these points and then I start to shift out my model, I can then skew it and offset it much more easily if I really want to make modifications to how the actual overall look of the asset would be if I really wanted to pull it in and sort of dint things in your overall model and be able to shift it around. One thing you can do if you have one of these components, you can use it on multiple objects at the same time so you can skew and bend to five different objects at once which is really awesome. One great thing is you can always remove the modifiers if you want and the object will go back to its original look because it doesn't change or destroy anything you've done so it's a non-destructive kind of solution. So I actually think this is a really awesome asset and I'll put all the links down below so you don't miss out and you can mess around with this and it really customizes everything you've got and then it's got loads of tools and stuff that is just one click and you can play around with it. So let me know what you think. And do be sure to come and check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects. And there's a massive list down in the description. Do be sure to check out all the links down below for all the sales and everything that you can find for this week. And a big thank you to all my patrons. Special thank you to Peter Steiner and Very Shooter for the amazing support. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.